Quippus, sometimes known as Kippus or Talking Knots, were recording devices historically used in the region of Andean South America. A quipu usually consisted of colored, spuns, and plied thread or strings made from cotton or camelid fiber. For the Inca, the system aided in collecting data and keeping records, ranging from monitoring tax obligations, properly collecting census records, calendrical information, and military organization. The cords contained numeric and other values encoded by knots in a base 10 positional system. Equipu could have only a few or up to 2,000 cords. The configuration of the quippus have also been compared to string mops. Archaeological evidence has also shown a use of finely carved wood as a supplemental, and perhaps more sturdy, base on which the color-coordinated cords would be attached. A relatively small number have survived. Objects that can be identified unambiguously as quippus first appear in the archaeological record in the first millennium AD. They subsequently played a key part in the administration of the Kingdom of Cusco and later Tahu and Tinshuyu, the empire controlled by the Incan ethnic group, flourishing across the Andes from c. 1100 to 1532 AD. As the region was subsumed under the invading Spanish Empire, the use of the quipu faded from use, to be replaced by European writing systems. However, in several villages, quipu continued to be important items for the local community, albeit for ritual rather than recording use. It is unclear as to where and how many intact quippers still exist, as many have been stored away in mausoleums. Along with the dead, quipu is the Spanish spelling and the most common spelling in English. Kipu is the word for not in Cusco Quechua. The KH is an aspirated K. In most Quechua varieties, the term is Kipu. Etymology The word Kipu, meaning not or to not, comes from the Quechua language word Quipu, 1704, the lingua franca and language of administration of Tahu and Tinshuyu. The Kipu were knotted string devices that were used for recording both statistical and narrative information most notably by the Inca but also by other peoples of the Central Andes from pre-Incaic times through the colonial and republican eras, and even, in a considerably transformed and attenuated form, down to the present day, archaeologist Gary Ayrton, 2003. Purpose most information recorded on the Quipus consists of numbers in a decimal system. In the early years of the Spanish conquest of Peru, Spanish officials often relied on the Quipus to settle disputes over local tribute payments or goods production. Spanish chroniclers also concluded that Quipus were used primarily as mnemonic devices to communicate and record numerical information. Quip Camayox could be summoned to court, where their bookkeeping was recognized as valid documentation of past payments. Some of the knots, as well as other features, such as color, are thought to represent non-numeric information, which has not been deciphered. It is generally thought that the system did not include phonetic symbols analogous to letters of the alphabet. However, Gary Ayrton has suggested that the Quippus used a binary system which could record phonological or logographic data. To date, no link has yet been found between a Quipu and Quechua, the native language of the Peruvian Andes. This suggests that Quippus are not a glottographic writing system and have no phonetic referent. Frank Salomon at the University of Wisconsin has argued that Quippus are actually a semasiographic language. A system of representative symbols, such as music notation or numerals, that relay information but are not directly related to the speech sounds of a particular language. The Kipu database project, begun by Gary Ayrton, may have already decoded the first word from a Kipu, the name of a village, Puru Chaco, which Ayrton believes was represented by a three-number sequence, similar to a zip code. 
If this conjecture is correct, Quippus are the only known example of a complex language recorded in a 3D system. Literary uses Laura Manelli, a professor of pre-Columbian studies at the University of Bologna, has discovered something which she believed to be a 17th-century Jesuit manuscript that contains detailed information on literary Quippus. This manuscript consists of nine folios with Spanish, Latin, and ciphered Italian texts. Owned by the family of Neapolitan historian Clara Michinelli, the manuscript also includes a Wolpapu fragment. Michinelli believes that the text was written by two Italian Jesuit missionaries, Joan Antonio Cumas and Giovanni Anello Oliva, around 1610-1638 and Valera, a mestizo Jesuit sometime before 1618. Along with the details of reading literary quippus, the documents also discuss the events and people of the Spanish conquest of Peru. In the text of these documents, Cummer states that there are quippus which accounted for uses other than accounting. Since so many quippus were burned by the Spanish, very few remained for Cummer to analyze. As related in the manuscript, the word Pachac March, the Inca deity of earth and time, was used many times in these quippus, where the syllables were represented by symbols formed in the knots. Following the analysis of the use of Pachac March, the manuscript offers a list of many words present in quippus. Bruce Mannheim, the director of the Center for Latin American Studies at the University of Michigan, and Colgate University's Gary Ayrton question the location of its origin and its authenticity. System Marcia and Robert Asher, after having analyzed several hundred quippus, have shown that most information on quippus is numeric and these numbers can be read. Each cluster of knots is a digit, and there are three main types of knots. Simple overhand knots, long knots, consisting of an overhand knot with one or more additional turns, and figure eight knots. In the Asher's system, a fourth type of knot, figure of eight knot with an extra twist, is referred to as E. A number is represented as a sequence of knot clusters in base 10. Powers of 10 are shown by position along the string, and this position is aligned between successive strands. Digits in positions for 10 and higher powers are represented by clusters of simple knots. Digits in their ones position are represented by long knots. Because of the way the knots are tied, the digit 1 cannot be shown this way and is represented in this position by a figure of 8 knot. 0 is represented by the absence of a knot in the appropriate position. Because the 1's digit is shown in a distinctive way, it is clear where a number ends. One strand on a quipu can therefore contain several numbers. For example, if 4s represents four simple knots, 3l represents a long knot with three turns, e represents a figure of eight knot and x represents a space. The number 731 would be represented by 7s, 3s, e. The number 804 would be represented by 8s, x, 4l. The number 107 followed by the number 51 would be represented by 1s, x, 7l, 5s, e. This reading can be confirmed by a fortunate fact. Quippus regularly contained sums in a systematic way. For instance, a chord may contain the sum of the next n chords, and this relationship is repeated throughout the quipu. Sometimes there are sums of sums as well. Such a relationship would be very improbable if the knots were incorrectly read. Some data items are not numbers but what Asher and Asher call number labels. They are still composed of digits, but the resulting number seems to be used as a code, much as we use numbers to identify individuals, places, or things. Lacking the context for individual quippus, it is difficult to guess what any given code might mean. Other aspects of a quippu could have communicated information as well. Color coding, relative placement of chords, spacing, and the structure of chords and subchords. Some have argued that far more than numeric information is present and that Quipu are a writing system. 
This would be an especially important discovery as there is no surviving record of written Quechua predating the Spanish invasion. Possible reasons for this apparent absence of a written language include an actual absence of a written language, destruction by the Spanish of all written records, or the successful concealment by the Incan peoples of those records making the matter even more complex. The Inca kept separate quipu for each province, on which a pendant string recorded the number of people belonging to each category. This creates yet another step in the process of decryption in addition to the Spanish attempts at eradicating the system. Historians Edward Hyams and George Ordish believe quipus were recording devices, similar to musical notation, in that the notes on the page present basic information, and the performer would then bring those details to life. In 2003, while checking the geometric signs that appear on drawings of Inca dresses from the first new chronicle in good government, Written by Felipe Guam and Pomer de Ayala in 1615, William Burns Glynn found a pattern that seems to decipher some words from Quippus by matching knots to colors of strings. The August 12, 2005, edition of the journal Science includes a report titled Keep You Accounting in Ancient Peru by anthropologist Gary Erton and mathematician Carrie J. Brazine. Their work may represent the first identification of the quipu element for a non-numeric concept, a sequence of three figure of eight knots at the start of the quipu that seems to be a unique signifier. It could be a toponym for the city of Puruchaco, or the name of the quipu keeper who made it, or its subject matter, or even a time designator. Bain on Davies considers Quippus as a sign system and develops an interpretation of their physical structure in terms of the concept of a data system. Kipu Kamayuk supplied colonial administrators with a variety and quantity of information pertaining to censuses, tribute, ritual and calendrical organization, genealogies, and other such matters from Inca times. Performing a number of statistical tests for Quipu Sample Virginia 42527, one study led by Alberto Saez Rodriguez discovered that the distribution and patterning of S and Z knots can organize the information system from a real star map. History Tawentin Shuyu Quipu Kamayox, the accountants of Tawentin Shuyu, created and deciphered the Quipu knots. Quipicamayox could carry out basic arithmetic operations, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. They kept track of meter, a form of taxation. The Quipicamayox also tracked the type of labor being performed, maintained a record of economic output, and ran a census that counted everyone from infants to old blind men over 80. The system was also used to keep track of the calendar. According to Guam and Pomoth, Quipicamayox could read the Quippus with their eyes closed. Quipicamayox were from a class of people, males, 50 to 60, and were not the only members of Inca society to use Quippus. Inca historians used Quippus when telling the Spanish about Tahu and Tinshuyu history. Members of the ruling class were usually taught to read Quippus in the Inca equivalent of a university, the Achawasia, in the third year of schooling, for the higher classes who would eventually become the bureaucracy. Spanish invasion in 1532, the Spanish Empire's conquest of the Andean region began, with several Spanish conquerors making note of the existence of Quippus in their written records about the invasion. The earliest known example comes from Hernando Pizarro, the brother of the Spanish military leader Francisco Pizarro, who recorded an encounter that he and his men had in 1533 as they traveled along the Royal Road from the highlands to the central coast. It was during this journey that they encountered several Quipu keepers, later relating that these keepers untied some of the knots which they had in the deposits section of the Quipu and they re-tied them in another section of the quipu. The Spanish authorities quickly suppressed the use of quipus, 
The conquistadors realized that the Quipicamayox often remained loyal to their original rulers rather than to the king of Spain, and Quipicamayox could lie about the contents of the message. The conquistadors were also attempting to convert the indigenous people to Roman Catholicism. Anything representing the Inca religion was considered idolatry in an attempt to disregard Catholic conversion. Many conquistadors considered Quipus to be idolatrists and therefore destroyed many of them. Contemporary Social Importance the Quipu system operated as both a method of calculation and social organization, regulating regional governance and land use, while evidence for the latter is still under the critical eye of scholars around the world. The very fact that they are kept to this day without any confirmed level of fluent literacy in the system is testament to its historical, moral, authority, today. Kipu is regarded as a powerful symbol of heritage, only unfilled and handled by pairs of contemporary dignitaries as the system and its construction embed modern cultural knowledge, ceremonies in which they are curated, even though they can no longer be read, is even further support for the case of societal honor and significance associated with the Kipu. Even today, the knotted cords must be present and displayed when village offices leave or begin service, and draping the cords over the incoming office holders instantiates the moral and political authority of the past. These examples are indicative of how the Kipu system is not only fundamental mathematically or lingually for the original Inca, but also for the cultural preservation of the original empire's descendants. Anthropologists and archaeologists working in Peru have highlighted two known cases where quipus have continued to be used by contemporary communities, albeit as ritual items seen as communal patrimony rather than as devices for recording information. The Kipu system, being the efficient method of social management it was for the Inca, is also a link to the Cuzco census. As it was one of the primary methods of population calculation, this also has allowed historians and anthropologists to understand both the census and the decimal hierarchy system the Inca used, and that they were actually initiated together, due to the fact that they were conceptually so closely linked to Picocha, Peru in 1994. The American cultural anthropologist Frank Salomon conducted a study in the Peruvian village of Tupacoca, where quipus are still an important part of the social life of the village. As of 1994, this was the only village where quipus with a structure similar to pre-Columbian quipus were still used for official local government record-keeping and functions, although the villagers did not associate their quipus with Inca artifacts. San Cristobal de Rapaz, Peru The villages of San Cristobal de Rapaz, located in the province of Oyan, keep a quipu in an old ceremonial building, the Caja Huea, that is itself surrounded by a walled architectural complex. Also within the complex is a disused communal storehouse, known as the Pasa Culca, which was formerly used to protect and redistribute the local crops and some Rappuccinos believe that the Quipu was once a record of this process of collecting and redistributing food. The entire complex was important to the villages, being the seat of traditional control over land use, and the center of communication with the deified mountains who control weather. In 2004, the archaeologist Renata Peters and the cultural anthropologist Frank Salomon undertook a project to conserve both the Quipus in Rapaz and the building that it was in, due to their increasingly poor condition.